Well, hello, this is me again. Today is September 26, and let me start with uh, what uh, my friend Larry Johnson uh, posted a couple of days ago by uh, his friend uh, Mr. Hamholt uh, Smith, a wonderful, wonderful uh, <coughs> military and geopolitics analyst, and uh, he uh, penned a short piece called Are They As Stupid As They Look? And there he basically uh, describes the situation with the elites, uh, yes, of course, elites, Western elites, and he makes, in a very short note, uh, a very good case that actually they probably are even stupider than they look. And uh, we cannot disagree, I cannot disagree with this assessment, because I was on it for many years now, and now we're beginning to get this uh, basically massive confirmation of the uh, complete moral and intellectual decline there. And if you look at this and kind of give it a, a minute of thought, you know, the question which should appear actually. Uh, in this respect, from anybody who is a normal person, you know, is that are there any normal people left, really? Uh, on the very top echelon, very few, I would say that would be my assessment. The lower you go, the more probably you have uh, instances uh, of um, uh, people who are basically, you know, just okay. They understand some things. And uh, from what... Uh, I hear there are many people from, for example, Intel community, from what I heard, that are beginning to talk to uh, U.S. Congress, to senators and congressmen about what was happening and is happening right now in the country. But these are mostly rumors, and please don't quote me on that. But fact is that somebody certainly is normal. Somebody understands what is going on. But there is no denial that by whatever mechanisms which are behind this, and there are a number of those mechanisms, uh, including as Colonel Wilkerson correctly stated when he was responding to uh, the question about like, are they really that stupid? Are they really that immoral? And he said, uh, you know, you can find it on the YouTube, and he stated it's in a very calm but kind of, you know, resigned manner that, you know what, uh, mundane things, mortgage, jobs, children in school, and things of this nature. And you have the pressures where your job and your careers and your livelihood actually depend on what you say and how you say it, being dependent, be that on the government or be that on the corporate uh, level, be conscious, you know. So it's what happens. People begin to make their, you know, deals with their consciousness, deals with their morality and standards. And as a result, those people, good people who probably could have made a change, they do not want to sacrifice. And this is understand understandable, make no mistake. I'm absolutely not calling on those people going out and throwing their life, you know, uh, on the altar of their righteousness and good, good deeds, so to speak, because I understand, believe me, and this is a human thing. But obviously it takes sometimes really people of the incredible uh, moral and physical courage, so to speak, you know, to go out and do that thing, you know, to announce and denounce the system and denounce what is happening, for example, in our particular case in the United States. But uh, 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 let's get to more sub subject driven matter. And when you say, and Mr. Smith says, are they stupid as they look? Most of them are, especially on the top echelon. But look at this. If you look at the, for example, uh, uh, anti -diplom I don't know how to pronounce it, anti-diplomatic Italian piece, uh, which uh, uh, is uh, five days old, you will see the interview of General Bertolini, who recognized that basically uh, the uh, situation with the referendum in uh, uh, what is becoming basically Russian, new Russian territories uh, in former Ukraine. And he immediately stated on the 21st of September that, oh my gosh, we have the Russians, uh, you know, uh, also showing their um, nuclear deterrent. 
Then he proceeds to basically repeat all these uh, points, which is primarily propaganda uh, disseminated in the West, uh, including from the service by uh, Ukraine, uh, Ukraine itself. But in general, when you read this interview, and please go, just go there, look it up, and uh, use the Google uh, Translate. It will give you basically a good gist or gist of uh, what he's talking about. But one thing he really caught correctly, and you can uh, basically see it in this article. He speaks specifically about it, and he's talking about that in the end, it's Anglo-Saxon proxy war which of course does everything it can to demolish any kind of mechanism of the unifying of the uh, Eurasian uh, landmass, which is, has to turn obviously into the gigantic economic monster. And uh, he speaks about this openly. And this is the guy who actually commanded uh, Italian, one of the Italian uh, large formations, army group, I believe, something like that. So, and uh, he certainly is not far away removed from the, let's say, some intel. And it's a very interesting interview. And if you discount the uh, issue of his repeating the operational, basically, mythology there, you will recognize that the, there is an understanding in Europe of what is going on, at, at least on some, uh, like, say, medium to high level uh, politicos, so to speak, and or, or military people. So here he is. And I have also some reasons to believe that people people in Bundeswehr, not all of them, but some people in Bundeswehr, they do understand what is going on. So it's not like Europe is completely oblivious, its political elites are oblivious. But to really demonstrate to you, and again, I'm not interested in giving you at this stage, you know, sea traps. I gave one last time that, oh, here's the referendum is ongoing and, you know, in uh, Donbass and Kherson and Zaporozhye, yeah, it is ongoing and actually attendance is huge. So by all stretch and Im by all means, it will be obviously accepted as valid. And then, of course, I think that on the 30th, I think so, Putin will talk to nation on the 30th. So it's probably going to be after the uh, extraordinary session or uh, uh, of joint session of the State Duma and Federation Council, where those uh, territories will be admitted to Russia. But uh, kind of harking back to Mr. Bartolini and this general, obviously he got it somewhat right, but not in general. Russian uh, nuclear uh, deterrent there is not for Ukraine. Russia demolishes Ukraine as we speak, you know, and its uh, last resource, uh, you know, just fine without it. Unless, of course, you read the Ukraine, Ukrainska Pravda or New York Times or Wall Street Journal. Those guys live in the alternative military universe. But, but the point is that it's all about NATO. And he himself, Bartolini, says about that. And yeah, once there are uh, new territories are admitted, and as I already stated, the new military uh, uh, district will be formed. And that is why partial mobilization is also designed to address this issue. Then uh, we look at the major shift in the balance of power. Not that it wasn't happening before, but uh, this one is kind of, you know, uh, very discreet. It's very noticeable. And this is all about NATO. And specifically, this is all about, obviously, Anglo-Saxon part of NATO, which is, of course, the United States and the United Kingdom. But this is just uh, to demonstrate to you that not everybody is completely oblivious. And of course, we have the voices of reason and uh, of uh, good professionalism when speaking about, the, for example, uh, special military operation. And again, as I already stated, Colonel Douglas McGregor, Larry Johnson, Scott Ritter once in a while comes up with great observations and uh, other people. And like Mr. Hank uh, uh, Smith uh, pointed out, but the people who made the decision and people who drive the whole thing, they are nuts, basically, you know, so they are not that smart. Whatever the mechanism, again, and how it works, it's, the you know, that we get that type of uh, people and that type of attitudes. We may speak uh, separately, and it's going to be a very long talk, and it's actually very interesting and remarkable. But to demonstrate to you what is going on here, um, we need to start with the uh, issue of Mr. Uh, Sullivan, who, uh, and you know, he is a political scientist and a lawyer and the guy who has zero <clears throat> actually relation to any kind of the uh, uh, 
issue of weapons and military doctrines and he warned Russia and warns Putin of catastrophic consequences if nuclear weapons used in Ukraine. Sullivan did not describe the nature of the planned U.S. response in his comments on Sunday, but said the United States has privately to Moscow spelled out in greater detail exactly what that would mean. And let me explain what it means. As I already stated, uh, Sullivan is the guy who actually originated this bullshit when he stated that Putin threatened with the nuclear weapons, which of course Russians vehemently denied and debunked it actually, and refuted it, and correctly so, because Putin never issued any kind of threat. <clears throat> but Sullivan invented this shit, and so he started to react to his very own lies, and that's what they do pretty much in modern uh, nowadays administration. He started to threaten Russia that there will be consequences. Let me explain something to you. Let's imagine, it's obviously a complete baloney, but let's imagine somehow Russia decides to use a nuclear weapon in Ukraine. Nobody will explain to me why Russia would need to do that, uh, unless of course then the whole force of NATO begins to interfere there and begins to roll into Ukraine. Then Russia may consider obviously the uh, uh, tactical nukes, and hey, that would be absolutely reasonable, but again, uh, let's say Russia does this, for whatever reasons. So what's going to be a response? Uh, and of course, the United States can do absolutely nothing, zilch, to address this issue, because unless, of course, the United States wants to start the war with you, the use of nuclear weapons, but then again, Mr. Sullivan should be uh, looking uh, really fast for any kind of the cover or any kind of the bunker, which uh, will be broken down, you know, uh, by some kind of serious uh, warhead or something like, I don't know, you know that, those uh, funny looking uh, uh, hypersonic gliders, strategic uh, hypersonic <laughs> gliders are already on uh, first line duty and so, um, you know, it's up to him. But that's how it all works. It's all about PR. Uh, so Sullivan invents this idea that Russians somehow want to use nuclear weapons. Then he himself reacts to his lie. And he obviously winds up the public to the point of the people begin to panic. And people like me has to come out and say that Mr. Sullivan obviously never read Russian military doctrine. And he doesn't understand what the use of uh, nuclear weapons is and how it proceeds. Well, he cannot. He is humanity's dumbed down product of some kind of political science bullshit, you know, and he's a lawyer. Nothing wrong with the lawyers, again, make, make no mistake. But this is not a background which allows you to basically spread some kind of military bullshit and then pretend that people will not call it. Up, call it. So I'm calling it. It's complete crap. I mean, but hey, whatever works, you know, uh, this administration evidently uh, is facing some issues <laughs> which are extremely hard to face. And we have to keep this in mind. <clears throat> but even to uh, describe more to the, uh, for you uh, to what degree and degeneracy it all fell down uh, and how, for example, American top brass, military top brass, which is, again, as I said, that never won shit in their life. They lost all their wars they ever fought. And basically, uh, and uh, I am on record, but there are many sore losers. Here's the, uh, another bullshit by some American general. He used to be actually the commander of the first armored division, I believe. But look what uh, he states. Obviously, it's uh, from the <coughs> no less than uh, <coughs> uh, business insider, which is uh, basically tabloid. And people who work there, they're shit diggers, basically. Well, as most of the American and Western media are, they are basically people without any integrity, morals, or honor. But look at this. An ex-U.S. Army general who witnessed Russia's basic training of recruits says it was awful and the newbies being drafted faced disaster on the front line. First, uh, and who is this general? Well, let's take a look at who is his, this general. This general is uh, uh, Mark Hertling, who commanded the U.S. Army Europe, explained in a Twitter thread that he has personally witnessed how Russian army is poorly led and poorly trained. The poor training, uh, coupled with the decision to draft in recruits uh, with little experience, is likely to spell disaster for Russia, he said. Okay, let me put it this way. 
uh, anybody who uh, from the Pentagon and who commanded anything larger than the platoon or maybe company in Pentagon who uh, produced uh, for all of us such things as Iraq, uh, Afghanistan, or Syria, well, I mean, those people need to go back to the military academy and study basic things. And again, I do have issues with the professional integrity and professional qualities of the American generals nowadays. Not all of them, but many of them are. And so here this guy, Hefling, he says that he witnessed. Uh, you see, unlike this uh, U.S. general commander on Europe, I wrote so much in terms of planning for the combat training on the level of the single ship and then on the level of the brigade and I communicated with people who actually wrote uh, combat training plans already in 80s on the levels not just brigade but let's say military district. So my first question appears here when this general says that he witnessed and let me give you another uh, so to speak uh, quote from him. He says now uh, that by comparison, uh, uh, Ukraine army more closely follows this model after having received training from U.S. personnel in both individual and unit training techniques since 2014. And that is the issue with this general because he doesn't understand evidently that those four trained recruits which are not part of special military operation and he is obviously lying because of that because the Russia specifically has primarily professional troops there and what is called kontraktniki which people uh, serve as a contract. He doesn't understand that uh, actually when you have the kill ratio, which is now confirmed by everybody, of one Russian soldier per 10 plus, more like 11 Ukrainians, well, you, he better start looking at uh, how is the training uh, in the American army if, as he says, the Ukrainians are doing so well, which is, of course, a complete myth and bullshit. But hey, what do I know? I just wrote plans for the brigade level, combat training on the number for the... 13 ships and several cutters, not to speak another, uh, about the other units um, and uh, subunits which were attached. But then again, that's just me. And the question again, which is returning to Mr. Hertling, whatever the hell his name is, is for how long did he observe this uh, combat training? Uh, I can tell you one thing. One thing which is missing immediately from that is the fact that he doesn't describe when he visited Russia and when he observed this training. Something tells me that if he ever saw, which is probably for a few hours, any kind of training, because, I mean, American channels don't go to Russia and they don't sp uh, spend about two months, which uh, requires actually for basic boot boot camp, make no mistake, not to speak around about that uh, standard uh, uh, combat training, uh, he didn't do that, he lies. So basically he probably visited some kind of unit for maybe five, six hours in one day, spoke with a couple of officers, and most likely it, has, it had happened during the times of Mr. Serdikov, who was the Minister of Defense, and uh, I doubt he had enough data, so to speak, to make conclusion one way or another, because basically he didn't see shit. And that's the issue. And uh, when some people like that tell me that he saw the, how recruits are trained, dude, if you're talking about the recruits which are new recruits, and you saw the boot for whatever number of hours, or maybe minutes which you saw, you cannot make any conclusion. No, no professional will ever make this conclusion. But then again, hey, what do I know? These guys won in Afghanistan beautifully, run like hell, being the, having their asses handed to them by the guys in the sandals and turbans with AK-74. So they obviously evidently won Iraq so beautifully that that has the whole other separate story. And uh, when you begin to look at this, it's just like, uh, yeah, do you even have the professional background to uh, actually have the proper conclusions, even on the with teeny weeny uh, glimpse of what you saw? Of course not. Of course not. And then, of course, he usually, uh, if you read the piece, he simply lies about uh, military affairs and the special military operation, and that discloses immediately what a sore loser he is, which uh, most most of them are, because obviously they never conducted anything like this. They never saw their, uh, basically, uh, 
how the maneuverable warfare works. Because obviously when Mr. Rogov, two days ago, Mr. Rogov, the chief of the big concha of the military civilian uh, administration of the Zaporozhye uh, uh, Oblast District, tells that basically everybody knows now the plan that and Pentagon plan to attack, you know, and uh, d using the pontoon bridges over Dnieper and, you know, basically doing the frontal attack on our forces. He said, uh, actually, Ukrainian military are in horror and they try to abandon and, you know, just resist this plan because it's suicidal. But hey, that's American plan, you know, that's how they fight. So, and that is the issue here. We have these people who just absolutely, man I, I, I don't know how to say it. You know, uh, one has to have at least self-respect when speaking like this. But then again, uh, can I, uh, for example, uh, foresee or even assume that this general should have at least some kind of uh, actual briefings from Pentagon? Not necessarily all secret ones, you know, because obviously they, I think so, they lose their clearances after they retire or maintain it, but they don't really get anything from that. Uh, hey, uh, if Pentagon continues to uh, push that agenda and uh, on this guy, so you know what, it's fucked. And we know it is fucked. And uh, that's uh, just the, one of the examples I wanted to demonstrate to you with this General Hertling, who obviously thought that uh, uh, Ukrainian training is awesome. Yeah, sure. Losses 1 to 11, basically. Oh, absolutely. That's American training for you. So, but let's kind of put this away a little bit and uh, also concentrate on the more, uh, uh, how, to, uh, how to say it, uh, profound situation, which is kind of epistemic, if you wish. And the question is that we do have this uh, degeneration of the uh, Western elites. And part of this degeneration is because obviously we have people, as I already stated, who are uneducated. Uh, education in uh, political science is not education. There's no such science as political science. And basically it's a b b shallow meandering program of giving some facts here and there. And that is why they cannot find their own ass with both or hands in the bright elite room because they don't know history they know shit and i you know what with all my respect to mr uh, uh jordan peterson who's uh even uh the fact that he shut down this uh bloviating bullshitter mr uh pierce morgan few days ago when talking about uh russia and putin uh, and again, Pierce Morgan is basically nobody. He was the editor in the uh, British tabloids. He is uh, from the Fleet Street. He has degree in nothing, which is degree in journalism. And basically, the guy is no shit. Basically, he he just does you know gen generalizations on the issues of fashion. Uh, I don't know TikTok and politics. That's the kind of the uh, people who actually constitute the Western elite. But even Jordan Peterson who was obviously telling this Mr. Uh, Pierce Morgan that uh, Mr. Putin is not really Hitler or anything, you know, and that's true, you know, uh, and I understand uh, Jordan Peterson himself has bachelor's in political science, so de de basically detracted, you know, subtracted from the knowledge base, uh, and he talks about his PhD in clinical psychology, and some of his uh, basically uh, uh, intellectual constructs and uh, uh, logical constructs and uh, uh, discussions are great. I mean, make no mistake, he speaks o o from the professional point of view. But even he, when he begins to talk about Russia, the only thing which I have to grab is my, you know, uh, to pull hair from my, uh, you know, uh, head, because obviously, he doesn't know shit about Russian history. And when the guy begins to uh, bloviate on the issues of the Russian Revolution, actually there were two revolutions since 1917. One of the February, which was liberal revolution, and the other was in October, which was Bolshevik Revolution. He better get his facts straight. And when he begins to uh, invoke Mr. Dostoevsky again and his uh, story possessed, he really have to understand that uh, the issue of Russian Revolution, which was Bolshevik Revolution, and it was a revolution, believe me, um, it was uh, happening the same as February Revolution within the framework of war. 
and war, no matter how Mr. Peterson or Mr. Pierce Morgan or even this general, whatever his name, they talk about, we have to understand, it is the only framework in which humanity exists. It's the framework of the conflict, and I have been talking about this for years now. I wrote three books on that. That war is the ultimate decider, and the conflict is the ultimate decider in terms of the geopolitics and even emerging political uh, philosophies and even in terms of the economy. If people don't understand that. They still think that, you know, because they have the PhD in some, uh, you know, clinical psychology, they ha can pass uh, judgment, and, uh, you know, on some issues such as complex issue, for example, as Russian Civil War and Russian Revolution, because they read Dostoevsky possessed. Oh my God, you know, and the point is, Dostoevsky was obviously a genius writer. He was fucked up in head big time, believe me. But he was genius. But point is, Dostoevsky was a very bad geopolitical observer. He wrote a couple of wonderful things in his diaries. But other than that, he was primarily fiction writer. And he was moralistic writer. He was classic Russian Orthodox church writer. He was very Russian in many respects. But still, I think he was less Russian than Tolstoy, for example. But it is up to Mr. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Peterson uh, to bloviate and, you know, pass his uh, ideas on that, but I'm telling you, he is wrong. Whenever they begin any scholar, quote-unquote, from West begins to talk about Russian history, they immediately fail to grasp it, because as I already st stated many times, they fail to grasp what real war is. And again, even um, any American general, any American combat veteran who saw horror, you know, in Afghanistan and what have you, which, um, you know, that's a separate issue, they never fought, they never defended their country. They don't understand what is the invasion spectrum is, what happens, what, you know, they just don't have this, you know, idea. They don't have the reference point. They don't uh, understand how it works, and they can, don't have sense of it. And hey, uh, you know what? Uh, as I already stated, don't quote me on that. Quote, uh, you know what? Russophobe, uh, fanatical Russophobe Richard Pipes, who actually astutely observed that. That for Americans, for example, and British, and he wasn't the only one. I'm just, you know, using his name as the even Russophobes get it, that they don't have idea what they're talking about. And that is why when I get some uh, general or other guy talking about, oh my God, you know, there's a mobilization and, you know, yeah. Uh, apart from few facts of here and there, I totally expected, you know, some people not being happy with that. I mean, Russians went big time. N no question asked. And, um, but again, how, how can you bridge this uh, cultural a beast? How can you uh, convey, how you get across this point? You can't. You can't. You literally can't. You can't. You can go to West Point and you start to explain to them and none of them ever experienced their families being raped, killed, you know, burned, their property blown out. And they don't have those experiences. They don't understand. Few people who do, usually they arrive to their uh, uh, conclusions and ideas which are complete contrary to everything you hear today from the modern Western propaganda. And that is the issue. You cannot e educate those people. And again, there, uh, people talk a lot about this intellect. And even um, the famous uh, Russian, actually, clinical uh, psychologist and PhD in biology, and who uh, heads the Department of the Cognitive Studies of the St. Petersburg State University. That's the school with the renome. Uh, Tatiana Chernikovska, he, she says, when speaking about propaganda, she says, yeah, we are smart, you know, very intellectual. But again, if you're intellectual, you don't have a, a, a basically basic fundamental education and knowledge. That's the whole thing. And knowledge. Intellect without knowledge is nothing. It absolutely means nothing. And uh, if you, you cannot even fight their propaganda, and especially the propaganda which revolves around issues which require a lot of knowledge. And the reason I'm doing what I'm doing because I have their background. Not that I'm good at it, but I'm just saying that I have background. I can call bullshit in most cases, not all cases, but you can see the bullshit immediately. And that's the whole thing. And when Jordan Peterson begins to, uh, you know, uh, um, talk about Russian Revolution and Russian history, especially in the 20th century, well, what can I say? Uh, he should actually 
spend more time understanding Russian culture and reading up Russian literature if he wants to understand it. I do not expect him to study military doctrine, military sciences. That's very complex, much harder than any kind of the uh, psychology. But hey, what do I know? So, but even that, the fact that he begins to speak about it and it's as always like, oh no, not this again. They don't know no facts, they don't have knowledge, and as a result, we have what we have today. And uh, what we have today, I do not want to kind of, you know, uh, talk too much about it because it was so, so self-evident that if you begin to look even at the headlines, you see these are today's headlines, just a few hours ago. Stock market, here's on one veteran strategist guess at a bear market bottom. And then brutal bear market knocks seven major stocks below three dollars a share. Social security slowly running out of money and blah, 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 blah. Then you have the other uh, uh, stock market uh, headlines, which <laughs> even like read like this. Stocks fall as fat fears, currency turmoil persists. And so as you can s take a look at it and you can see yourself what it is describing, basically the economic collapse, which is ongoing as I speak to you. And this is just the start. And the question is not the stock market. As I already stated, stock market is a, a, basically, uh, I would say, uh, not even remotely that important as indicator. I'm looking at the warfare and I'm looking at the statements emanating from the White House. One begins to sense, well, it's not even sense, it's into your face pretty much, at desperation, this absolute desperation, especially coming from the, uh, coming from the, <coughs> upcoming midterms and of course the fact that basically once you look at Europe and once you look at the economy of the United States there is nothing to be uh, you know hopeful for it's absolutely bad and it's a systemic crisis it is not the crisis of some uh, lack of measures or otherwise over uh, 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 overdoing something it is systemic collapse and it was happening since 2008. It just accelerated and guess what accelerated it? The war and real geopolitics, the only two fundamental forces which shaped humanity. But then again, can you imagine explaining this to somebody else who never saw uh, what military techno modern military technology is and what it does and how it really influences everything we do? Even when we don't, uh, are not cognizant about it, and uh, but how to explain it? I'm trying, guys, and this is uh, my talk to you today. And uh, so, as always, guys, uh, those who uh, can afford, please support me on the Patreon, and uh, you know, those who like what I do, please uh, uh, subscribe to my channel, and uh, I will be talking to you later. And have a nice rest of the week. Bye-bye.